Hey y'all, it's Sarah, and I am bringing you a faux wood lighted star today. Um, for anybody that might be interested, I actually love mine, so I don't mind making a second one. Um, it doesn't really take all that much to do this. It's going to take about two full sheets of the Ready Board brand foam core. Um, I get mine at Dollar Tree, but Walmart and Dollar General also sell them. Uh, I'm using the Dollar Tree LED lights, specifically the ones that have kind of this longer little um, tube shape, just because they're really easy to get down in here. Um, and the other thing that I'm using is going to be this Dollar Tree star, and I'm just using it as a template to get my shape and make it easy to trace out. All that being said... I'm going to go ahead and jump in on this thing and kind of show you where I went with mine and maybe it'll set some ideas off for you. So the first thing I did was bring in my star. I lined it up on my foam core sheet and let me go ahead and take my little sticker off. There is, um, I just got asked this today on the Peppermint Cactus Facebook group. So, not all foam core sheets are created equal. The ones that I'm using, the reason that I'm pretty specific about the Ready Board brand is it has the more paper-like surface and not the laminate surface, um, which takes the paint and absorbs it differently uh, and allows us to get that more realistic wood grain look. So, you're looking for this kind of paper surface one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, one, I'm going to take this tag out of my way and save myself some headache. I would just recommend taking some of, I'm using the Dollar Tree poster putty, um, and just popping this in place. I'm putting it about the center of my foam core sheet, just because I've feel like it's going to give me the extra space to work with. And I'm actually making my star a little larger than what this star is. And you'll see what I mean. So we're just going to trace this out. And it's okay if you need to make your pencil marks a little darker to be able to see um, on this particular one. Because we're going to be covering all of this with our wood slats. Oops. Somehow I missed some spots. Let me go back in and fix that. If I can get it realigned here. There we go. Now we have a decent star. I'm not sure how well you guys can see that. But what I'm going to do with this in order to um, kind of enlarge this is I'm going to take my ruler... And I'm going to line it up with this each leg of this star. And I'm actually going to... I extended my, my original one at about a quarter, uh, an inch and a quarter larger. And I'm going to see if maybe I can actually go an inch and a half on this. So what you're seeing is I am lining this up. And just retracing at an inch and a half along the edge. And it looks like I will have enough room to go slightly bigger. So I will actually have stars in two different sizes. And you could adjust this at any, um, any size you want to, assuming you can get it to fit. If you go too large, though, you can see that the tip of my star here it would go off the page if I went too much further out than where I'm at at this moment. And you could draw your own star um, if you wanted to. I was just trying to look for a way that would make it really, really simple for everyone. If you were not a hand drawing kind of person... And here we are. That is my full-size star. I need to go a little further out up here. 
and maybe you guys can see kind of what I did there. Um, this part's going to be really simple. We're just going to do the same method where I just sketched it out. I'm going to go back in with my ruler and my straight edge blade and cut along those lines that I just made for myself. So along every leg, I'm just going to pop in here. And go all the way around and cut out my star. So I've done my cutting. All I've got to do now is pop my star out of place. And there we go. I have lots of good scraps. Now, in order to cover my star, all I did was take some of my already painted strips and guys if you're curious about how to get the paint finish i'll always put um the painting tutorials are their own and separate entity uh they're kind of their own thing that way i can put a lot of detail in that that way you can decide what color wood tones you might want for your project so um be sure to check those out so in those you'll learn i always do three inch strips almost always anyway this is why it just it happened to be the width of my ruler it works out really nice and easily to work with and handle so i painted all my strips ahead of time and i'm gonna come in just to make this faster and easier i'm gonna bring in my big fun cutting tool um, this is made by Logan. Mine is an older brand, but they do still make these. Or mine is an older model of this brand. Um, they make these. Hobby Lobby has been consistently running these on a really nice sale. Along with the handheld cutter. Um, which is this part. Mine didn't come with it. So, this was 30 bucks just on its own. They don't let you use coupons on some of the Logan brand things but they do run some pretty nice sales on them so if you haven't seen how this works I do have a video for cool tools that shows you a lot of different tools that you can use for cutting and shaping your foam core I'll try to link that below but all I have done is this works pretty much like a normal paper trimmer I have taken this little bar and I have popped it into an inch and a half which is half of my strip size that I already had pre-painted. I'm gonna pop this on its track. And now I have some perfectly cut inch and a half strips. And you can start out with um, just a few of your strips, line them up on your star, and then you should be able to use uh, what is left to finish out kind of the other arms of your star. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. And I'm just going to do three of them for right now. I actually don't remember how many it took me to maneuver around my first star. And this star is slightly bigger. So I'll get started with that. Slide this big thing out of the way. So all I did in order to cover my star is I kind of won. I wanted to, to dry fit. Um where they lined up. I really did want it to line up um, kind of cohesively throughout the piece. So one of the first places I want to make sure that gets aligned is kind of this longest point up here. There we go. That's the one that I kind of wanted to line up first. And the reason is, is because it is the longest point on here. Um, I wanted mine to come off this edge in the same direction, if that makes sense. Like right here to this point. Um, and I wanted to be able to make that full width with one strip rather than catching it in the middle. So we'll see how that works out. So that's going to be the first one that I lay down. Now, the other thing that I wanted to kind of point out is that when you align them, 
you want to make sure that you're like putting it up against something um, that helps you align your little, I'm going to call these their legs, um, your little legs so that you don't end up cattywampus with your strips or lopsided with your strips, or you may want it lopsided. So keep that in mind. And I'm going to go ahead and start gluing a few of these down. Since my bigger concern is my long span across here, I'm going to kind of flip this around. Not that that really matter, but I'm going to flip that around and line my strips up down here and quit playing with them. And I'm just going to use my ruler to help me find this edge. So I'm going to lay all of these other ones out around it so I know where this one is going, if that makes sense. So it's this one that I want to lay down. I'm going to mark where that sucker is going. And that's going to be the first one I glue down. My next step is just going to come in and I'm going to paint the edges of um, my little strips here. And to do that, I typically just use uh, the same paints, the same colors, whatever it was that I was using to paint. Or I use the mix that I have of, it's a little bit of uh, Waverly's Antique and a little bit of Waverly's Ink and a tad bit of Waverly's Clear. Um, and you'll see more about that in the paint tutorials. But you want to go ahead and do your edges in on these raw sides just so when they butt up together you don't see any chance of white showing through and kind of ruining the illusion of it being wood so go ahead and do all of your edges out so i got all my edges painted you can see that i've kind of made a mess with it and it's okay because i finish out um, my pieces anyway so my first step is going to be to go ahead come in here and glue to this first longest arm portion to hit that edge. So I'm going to go ahead and pop lots of hot glue and get this glued down to my backer. I'm going to go ahead and do this section also. And we're just going to kind of work our way around this star. I have tried to get the longest sections done first. And then I will trim those down and use these side pieces to go in and fill out kind of the shorter sections here. If that makes sense to you guys. So here I am doing all of these longest areas. And you honestly could pretty much put them on there any which way you wanted to. If you wanted to go on the diagonal, um, as a matter of fact, I did um, almost set mine up on the diagonal once I got um, my little slats put down. I did like how it looked on the diagonal, but ultimately I ended up going just having them um, horizontal. So to simplify that, I'm going to go ahead and glue right across that area. And I'm trying not to get too much overage on the glue um, on my little strips here, just because it's harder to um, cut through that hardened hot glue. So here's where I'm at. This is what the back side looks like. I'm going to come in again with my razor blade and um, grab my straight edge. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm just going to come in and drag this down and cut these little pieces off. These longer pieces here should be enough to finish filling in my star. So I have all those pieces cut down and I'm going to go ahead and jump in and start now the filling in process, um, which basically is just going to be doing a, more of the same thing and trying to use um, whatever sizes that you have 
left from that. So I'm going to go across here and see what all fits. And then whatever I have left, I'm going to fill that in. I have those glued in place now, and I'm just going to flip over, do this very same thing. Come in, grab my ruler, grab my blade. Try to get tight in that corner of that star. And I did not cut through that hot glue all the way. There we go. Let's try to get these little pieces. And then the last few remnants are what's going to fill in this very top section. Okay, so here's my last few scraps. And we're just going to pop those right in place. It's going to cover this whole thing with glue. And there we go. And if you guys were paying attention and counting, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that honestly only took three full three inch strips. Um, I know I should get better at counting that, but I, it goes back to I don't like math while I craft. And I get too into my crafts to remember to count. So I'm just going to pop there. And I'm doing this a little awkwardly from this side and pop there. Now, you could get to this point and stop. And I guess I did not glue this little guy down very well. So let's try that again. My glue, I think, dried before I had that popped off really well. So here is where it can go a lot of ways. You could be completely done at this stage. Um, you know, if you have any issues, um, a little, any jaggedness along where you made those cuts, come in very gently with a sanding block or sanding paper. Clean those up. Come in with your paint mixture um, to do your edges. And you could consider this good and be done. However, I always have to do just a little bit more than just that. So, I am going to do a couple things. One, I'm going to frame mine out. And in order to do that, I still have two of these left over. Um, which are these inch and a half. So, I'm going to come back in here, and you can do this with your ruler, but guys, I'm cheating uh, for the sake of speed. I am going to knock this down to an inch. So, what that's going to do is pull half an inch off of here. And I'm going to have kind of a border. You could do it at three quarters of an inch, whatever way you wanted to do your border. Um, I think my original one is maybe three quarters of an inch. Let's see. Actually, I think that's what it's at. So I'll bump that down to three quarters. I should be able to get two framing pieces or framing strips out of this. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Okay, so I have my little strips cut. And here is where things um, can go into, like, personal mode. This is how you personalize it. Make it yours. Uh, turn it into whatever works for your visual pleasure. I'm going to come in and really quickly... Because this is not just a 45 degree angle, it it comes down to like 36 degrees on three edges of a star and a 35 degree corner for another point of a star. Um, 
I'm just going to use the strip itself and kind of mark out where I want to cut these. So essentially all I did was take a couple of my strips, go ahead and mark them out. And started cutting those down and cut several at one time. Um, that made it easier for me to go around and do the entire edge of my star without having to sit and get um, a protractor and try to hit it at uh, the 36 degrees that it was or something. It's something along those lines. Don't hold me to that, guys. Um, but... I was entirely not sure how to teach anybody to randomly cut 30 something inches. Um, my next step would also be either one, you can wait to the very end once you get this framing on and do them all at once. But keep in mind that this section, this inner portion needs to at least be done now because it's much harder to get in there and get those edges painted after it's all glued together, but you can still do the edges after it's all glued together. So that's likely what I will do. And I'm gonna sit here and go ahead and cut out all my little framing pieces. Okay, so I have all my pieces cut down and I have gone ahead and painted out my edges. And I wanted to kind of show you where this can be a little tricky and complicated. The arms of this, this star, um, the Dollar Tree star that we copied aren't exactly um, perfect in length to each one or, or to one another. So you do kind of want to pay attention to that as you cut these pieces and almost do it individually as you go around because you're likely to get some that won't line up um, when you get to the end because the arms of the stars are not exactly the same size. I think one ends up being um, maybe like an eighth of an inch in length. But to see kind of what I've done here, and let me clean my glue off a little. I came up, hit those angles, and cut across on each one. And you'll see um, as I get to this last one where that kind of works out. If you notice, this length comes down and hits this edge. This one comes up and it juts out a little further. This next one will align at that point and then come down to this edge and um, you'll continue kind of that pattern as you go up. I'm not really sure of a better way to explain that other than to kind of let you watch where I'm going with this. And this is just the way that I chose to trim mine out. You could get as creative as you wanted to um, with your border if you even wanted a border at all. As you can see, like this particular one, I cut for that side, so it's a hair short. And I'm just gonna keep popping these in place. So as I get down to this last couple, you can kind of see how I marked it. So I'm going to go over to this one. Oh, let's see. I may want to go to this one. And I'm just going to take my ruler. Um, I don't know of any better method with it being slightly uneven. I don't know of any better method to tell you guys other than to measure out the arm of each one individually. Uh, but I will say that it's about six inches. So you could cut a bunch of your strips at the six inch point and then just lay them out and trim the edges kind of like we did on um, getting the shape overall. So I'm gonna pop these last two in place. And if your your alignment is not great, you can always, whoop, I'm going to be one little stick short. Let me grab another one over here. Um, if your alignment is not great, you can always trim that down here at the end. So you can see, I'm just marking out on those same angles that I've been trying to follow. 
And now I can use these other pieces to really help guide me there. And all I have to do is trim this last piece down and go ahead and paint my sides. Okay, so I've got everything glued down. I've gone ahead and painted out my edges, as you can see, or started on that. And I wanted to show you that I'm going to go ahead and jump into um, doing the back of mine because if I want to hang it on my tree, I don't have to worry about um, any of that showing. But as I'm doing this, I wanted you to see this really quick. Uh, when I tell y'all that the foam core itself has a kind of a grain to it. So right now I am painting against that grain um, with my paints. And you can kind of see what it does. It gives a very uneven look. That's where those lumpy, bumpy kind of ripples that you see in a full sheet um, along the short width, the 20 inch width. That's what happens if you try to go across them that way. The ripples definitely hit uh, the paint differently than if you're going kind of with them. And I wanted to show that because I, I've had some people express that they're still struggling. If you cut it that shorter length and you go to paint it that shorter length, those ripples can show up really strangely for you. So my back is pretty much done i just wanted some color on it where it wasn't bright white even if it went against the grain is still um, better than a bright white um, i'm going to go ahead and clean up any paint that i might have transferred just having it on my surface and i want to show you guys a really quick trick so we have some dimension here in these areas as it is just because they're layered but i'm going to come in with my my paint mix and it's my paint mix of my Waverly Wax, Waverly Clear, and the black chalk paint, the ink chalk paint. I'm going to dab it off really well off of my, on my sponge because I don't want it super dark. But I'm going to come in here and just kind of lightly brush this right along those edges. Now, all that's doing is creating the illusion of a shadow and making it seem like this thing is bulkier and um, a much thicker wood than what it actually is. And this is not necessary. It's just something I wanted to throw out to you guys for um, added detail when you're making a piece. And we're just doing it really softly. I'm going to go back through and make sure that I'm blending it out. Blend, blend, blend. And soften that kind of shadowy look around that inner edge. And maybe you can kind of see how that ended up um, kind of popping that up and giving it almost more depth, more dimension. Now that I'm a big mess, I'm going to let this dry for a moment. And then I'm going to show you how to light this thing up. Um, and that part's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward but there are a few tips and tricks that i want to offer you in that process all right we're ready to go ahead and put the lights in everything's fairly dry for me now um so i wanted to show you a few things i'm going to be using a little bit of glue just to help keep my paper from blowing out um, and you'll see what i mean about having your paper blow out when i go to show you this i am using i know that's kind of bright I am using Art Glitter Glue. Uh, my bottle's seen better days. I usually get the big bottle and refill the small bottle, which is why this one looks so rough. This is a fast drying permanent um, glue. It's usually something scrapbookers use. And the reason I like using it for this is it is fast drying, which means it's not got a lot of moisture sitting on your surface uh, ready to um, soak in there and cause your, your sheets to separate and your surface to come off. So I'm just going to unwire my Dollar Tree lights. Uh, they've got them in a knot here, and I'm trying to do this quickly. Okay, that took a little maneuvering to get that unknotted. But all I did for my lights is I kind of eyeballed where I wanted them. And I started here at the top because I wanted my battery pack to end up somewhere closer to the bottom of my star. So keep that in mind. And I'm just going to show you really quick kind of how I started this out. So I'm going to come right up here. Um, right about the center of my point 
I'm going to take this and I'm coming through the top and I'm spinning as I go down. And I, I barely punctured that surface. The reason that I barely just punctured that is now I'm going to come in with a little bit of my adhesive here. I'm going to pop that right into the little puncture hole and I'm going to spin this thing all the way through. So once I do, and I'm just using one of the thicker skewers, um, if you can see that, and they work out really great. They are the perfect size for these lights. So what that glue has done, that paper has now countersunk in there, and you can see what I mean about your paper blowing out. It kind of blows out like um, aliens. Um, so... That was why I put the glue in. That way, once that dr glue dries right around that hole, as I go to push this light in there, with that paper dried down around that hole, it's not going to blow it back out this way. So you can see I've gotten mine pretty sunk in there. And there you go. The only thing that you have to do at this point is kind of eyeball where you want your lights to go. And in order to space out the rest of these, all I pretty much did was I found a spot where I wanted it to go. I poked through from the back just a little bit, just enough. Just where you can barely see that tip come out. I'm going to go back in, do the very same thing that I just did with that starting light. I'm going to spin a hole in there. Add a little adhesive. Spin that paper down into there so that it's, it kind of gives you that countersunk look. And then I would continue to do that and let all of those holes dry before I actually fed my lights through. Um, I'm not going to sit and make you watch me feed all of those through. Uh, but I ended up being able to space it out all the way across just like this and with one full strand. You could always add more strands if you wanted to. I'm going to show you the back of this one. I just put the weight down at the bottom with my battery pack. Um, and one of the things I want to show you is that little screw is what allows you to open and close your battery pack and put new batteries in. So make sure that when you put glue down to glue it to your base, glue that surface up. And that way you can change your batteries. And that's it, guys. That's everything. I'm going to finish playing with this one and get it up on my tree. And I hope it gave you some ideas. Uh, I will be talking to you guys soon. And I hope you get a chance to...